video is essentially a four-part process made up of keywords, site content, inbound links, and social media. And today we're going to focus on the keywords portion. Keywords, I like to say, are the foundation of SEO because when you think about it, when you go to a search engine to search for something, the keywords that you use are really the crux of the entire search. So it's very important that websites pick the right keywords to optimize for so they find the right people and reach the right audiences. So one thing that's very important to note about keywords is that they are important, an important part of the algorithms or the math equations that search engines use to rank websites. So how often a keyword appears in the page content is actually a very important part of the algorithm and ranking that the search engines use. Now how does a search engine even know what a page is about or a website's about if the keyword doesn't appear on the copy of the website? You'd be surprised at how many times clients come to see us and say, uh, I want to be optimized for this keyword, yet ironically it doesn't appear anywhere on their website. It's a really common mistake more than you would expect. So make sure, this is really important. Part of the way that the search engine even knows that your site is about a particular keyword or topic is by including that keyword in the copy that it can read. And keywords should always be targeted to specific offerings or content. So if you sell running shoes, you want to make sure that you optimize towards running shoes and not dancing shoes because obviously you sell running shoes and you want to attract that audience. Now the tool that we like to use is the Google AdWords keyword tool. Uh, it's an external tool from the pay-per-click advertising program from Google and you can use that to um, find keywords, uh, find the search volumes for keywords, which we'll talk about in a minute, and you can uh, find other keywords that are related to what the topics that you're searching for. So it's a very helpful tool to use. Some things you should know about keywords. First is plurals and singular versions of keywords do not always yield the same search results. That's especially true in Google. So in other words, the word shoes is not the same as the word shoe singular. So shoes plural, not the same as the word shoe singular. You may see similar results, but they will not always be the same. And so it's important to remember that when you're selecting your keywords, that plurals versus singulars does make a difference. And when selecting your keywords, you want to use the exact phrase you're searching for or targeting for. In other words, ASICs running shoes as a phrase is not equal to running shoes ASICs. They will not bring up the same results typically, so you want to make sure that you're looking at data about the specific phrase you're interested in. So which keywords should you pick? Well, I like to say that the guideline is don't pick too broad and don't pick too sp specific. So you want to use search volume as your guide. In the Google Keyword Tool, which we go through in a different segment, uh, we'll talk about search volume. And search volume is the approximate number of searches done in a given month on that search engine, like, like Google, uh, for that particular keyword and keyword phrase. So you see here I have a table with three columns, the keyword, the search volume, and whether it's a good or bad choice in my estimation. Now, as an example today, we're going to pretend that we are an e-commerce site that sells ASICs running shoes. And so if we look at the first term there, shoes, uh, and we look at the, the search volume in Google, we find that there's over five, or there's exactly five million searches each month uh, on in Google for that term. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's an exact number. Um, again, we, we, that's not the exact number that Google gets searched on for shoes, but it's a relative number. So it gives us an idea of how often that particular term is searched for in Google, but it is not exact um, for that term or any term. Um, now, the word shoes is a bit broad. I said here it's too broad because shoes could mean multiple different types of things. For instance, it could mean dancing shoes or baby shoes or any number of things, horseshoes, doll shoes. So it's probably not an appropriate term for a company that sells primarily running shoes and a particular brand of running shoes. So the next phrase is a little bit better. Running shoes with 301,000 searches is a better choice even though it has less search volume because it's going to bring that particular client more targeted traffic because if you sell running shoes you want to attract people who are looking for running shoes not just any kind of shoe. So it's a, probably a better uh, term even though it's got a lot less searches. 
Then the next term, ASICS running shoes, is probably even better because its search volume, even though it's at 27,100 and so it's significantly less than 301,000 or 5 million, the reality is if we sell that particular brand of shoe, that is probably a really good targeted term and people who are looking specifically for ASICS running shoes are likely to visit our site if we're ranked well. So it's probably a very highly targeted term that we could use. Now on the flip side, you can't get too specific also. And the last phrase there, ASICS Gel 2130 running shoes, may be too specific. It's what we call a long tail term. It has lots of words in it, and it's very, very specific. And you'll notice that the search volume here is listed as zero. That does not mean there are zero searches done per month. Again, it's a relative number. It just means that there are a lot fewer searches done on this particular term than, say, ASICS running shoes with 27,000 plus searches. So it doesn't mean you should rule out uh, words that have or phrases that have a search volume of zero. It's just something to consider as you look at the relativity of search volume between these words and pick out which one's going to give you the best uh, best traffic and possible buyers for your site for the investment you're going to make from an SEO perspective. Now the other problem in the running shoes category is with ASICs every year they change out the number of the shoe. So this is actually like a almost like a part number to some degree uh, or a model number. So ASICs Gel 2130 might be the model number this year and typically next year it would be 2140. So because of that if I optimize for a phrase like that that's super exact the problem will be that next year I'll just have to optimize all over again for a whole new shoe and I'll have to basically start from scratch all over again. So it's probably a bit too specific in this particular case um, and I would probably go with ASICs running shoes if the choice for mine. Now if you're doing PPC, you should also think about focusing on high conversion terms. So if you're doing pay-per-click advertising um, and you know what terms that you're using uh, bring lots of sales, then you should always think about using those keywords too from an SEO perspective because you know that those do a good job of selling people your running shoes. So this is probably a good selection too if you have some PPC information. So again, on which keywords to, to pick? These are two questions that I get quite a bit from people when they talk about keyword selection. The first one is, should I select competitor brand keywords? In other words, should ASICs include Nike as an SEO keyword? And I say no to that. And the reason is that brands typically are always going to rank best for their own brand name. So it's going to be really tough for ASICs to oust Nike um, from their from their SEO and organic rankings, um, they're a very strong brand to begin with. But um, but to know that you know it's going to be difficult to actually oust them from their own name in the rankings. So I would say probably not best to go after that if you can avoid it. Um, it's probably better handled through pay per click advertising if you want to do something called conquesting, which we'll get to uh, later. But this um, this is probably not appropriate for SEO. Should I select misspellings of my brand names? In other words, should ASICs include ASIC singular as a SEO keyword? Um, I always say PPC or pay-per-click advertising is probably best to capture that as well because you don't want to confuse your visitors on the true brand spelling of your name. Remember that you have to put the keyword into your website. So if you put the keyword as the brand keyword as a misspelling into your website, you'll just confuse visitors on what your true brand spelling is. So you could use pay-per-click advertising for those types of options.